Hello and welcome to PCI Tech TV. My name is Kevin and today I want to show you how to get started with 3D Feature Extract, our new software which is available through PCI's website. Let's get started. The first thing you want to do is head to our website and under software look for partner products and what you'll find is 3D Feature Extract click through. So here we have some information on 3D Feature Extract and at the bottom on the right there's a download link for the trial version of the software. So all you need to do is supply some information, your email address, etc. and you'll be sent an automated message with instructions on downloading our software. So here's the email. The actual software installation is located here. It's an exe file that you'll save on your drive and then install. We also have some demonstration data that you can run with, that you can uh, work with over Raleigh, North Carolina, as well as an installation and a README license file. So I've already installed the software. So once you install the software, it will appear under All Programs 3D Feature Extract, so it should be near the top of the list on your machine. And we have two items in that folder. One is the user manual. It's quite a detailed user manual. It's about 60 pages and it includes uh, all of the information that you need uh, to uh, solve any problems that you have on uh, th using 3D Feature Extract. And then the actual software itself, which is located here, which I'll go ahead and launch. So here's the 3D Feature Extract software loaded on my machine. And uh, essentially we have a viewer with a left window and a right window. And down here we'll have a gallery of images. So this is where you load the stereo imagery so that you can perform your modeling. To get started with loading the imagery, switch over to the Files tab and click on Load Data. And go ahead and load the TIFF files. So I have two images over Raleigh, North Carolina, which is in the US. So once we've loaded some data into 3D Feature Extract, we need to associate a camera model with these images so that we can use them in stereo and extract uh, features and do some modeling. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to click on Batch Aerial Workflow. It's going to bring up this wizard dialog and I'll need to provide some basic information which is located in the folder where the imagery was uh, downloaded. So if I go to that folder you'll see that we have three important files. One is the exterior orientation. The exterior orientation provides the Omega Phi Kappa values or the position of the camera at the time of the uh, uh, f exposure of each uh, frame in the project. And the interior orientation provides details regarding the camera, so the focal length of the camera as well as the chip size. So I'm going to need this information to get started, so I'll just move this window down. So the focal length is 120 millimeters and we're working with a digital frame camera in this case and we have here the chip size so 92.16 and 165.888 then I'll go next now the next thing that I need to do is to specify the spatial reference system so I'm going to change that in this case we're working with state plane NAT83 and then I can load the detailed projection information here. So North Carolina and I'm going to change the units to feet and click OK. The exterior or orientation information can be loaded automatically by clicking on the exterior orientation file and you can see that we have all of the data that loads in automatically. So I have the XYZ position, the Omega Phi Kappa if there are any inconsistencies with how the exterior orientation file was read in with the actual imagery, I can make adjustments by making sure the cross-references are correct. So once I've done that, you'll see that the little blue icon that was present on these images uh, it goes away. So if I go to the Home tab, I can now load these images in the left and the right viewer. I'll lock my camera and I'll zoom in. You can see that when I zoom in the camera controls the view and keeps everything identical on both sides of the interface. Now to get started with modeling 
I'll first need to create a vector layer. So I'm going to create a vector layer. And I'll just leave it unnamed for now. I'll go back to the Home tab. And I'll click on Layer Manager. And what I need to do is I need to make my vector layer active and also display it. This controls whether we display the vector layer or not and this controls whether it's active. We could have multiple vector layers representing maybe different uh, parts of the data set or, um, or different types of, uh, of features such as uh, larger buildings, commercial buildings versus residential buildings and, and so on. So to get started I'm going to uh, zoom in on a building here so I've got stereo overlap for this building and once I have activated the layer and turned it on I now have access to the feature extraction tab now it's important uh, to license the trial version of the software to even access this capability so please be sure to contact us to get a license and I can digitize multiple different types of shapes and uh, to get going basically I hit control on the keyboard uh, s position the cursor where I want to start uh, extracting features. I'm going to start on the gutter line of this building here and then just click click away so I can let go of control and I'll click on this corner click on the bottom right corner click on the top right corner and when I'm done editing I right click and that closes the polygon automatically. Now the polygon itself is positioned where uh, it believes it to be on this image but because we have stereo imagery we have a different view of the same building which creates parallax which is what's going to allow us to uh, extract these features in, in three dimensions. So what I'll do is I'll move the building in epipolar so I can grab the actual polygon on the right hand side move it over to its position and then I can let go. So that's basically it. I've created my 3D building and I have other options. I could extrude down to the ground. This will extrude the building down to the ground. And uh, once I'm done with that, I can go back to the backstage, export this uh, feature. I'll export it to KML and we actually have an option to texture the building. So we can pick the two images that are visible within this project and uh, go ahead and save it and go ahead and export. To view the results just load up your KMZ layer into Google Earth. So go ahead and open that building layer that we just created into Google Earth. So there you have it. There's our 3D building that we just modeled uh, with the textures added on the side uh, visible within Google Earth. So thanks for watching PCI Tech TV. For more information on this product and many others, head to our website at www.pcigeomatics.com, find us on Twitter at PCI Geomatics, or like us on Facebook. Thanks for watching.